Welcome back to Mem Tips and Tricks. This is chapter two. If you missed the chapter one fundamentals, I strongly suggest that you go watch that first. You can get the link right here. In chapter one, we looked at PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit, how to download it, how to get started, and how to create a template. In chapter two, we will look more into Deploy Application PS1, which is the main PowerShell script that we are going to modify. Inside the tool, we will look at the different phases. We will look at the standard functions that's already provided in the script. We will also look at the log files, how to better group them and make it easier for you to debug once you have this in production. So why don't we just get started? First, we will right click Deploy Application PS1 and we will edit it using PowerShell ICE. Here we will go into the variables and we will fill out the application vendor, the app name and the app version. We will also fill out the script author. I'm going to show you why. Let's create a Google Chrome package. Let's just call this version 90 and the author is yourself. Now let's save this and try out the package. And what we can see is that our package is called Google Chrome 90. And I want to show you how this looks like in the logs. You remember we put these logs into the Intune Management extension. In here we see all the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit blocks. So you could imagine if you have a lot of these, it can be somewhat messy. So we can put in a prefix so we can sort on these PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit blocks. So how do we do that? Go back and let's just put PS in a dash. But if I do that, you maybe remember that our user interface is going to look like that. Let's try and see how that looks. Not really great. Let's go ahead and fix that. In here we have an installation title. Let's have Google Chrome 9 here. Let's save it and let's see about that. much better. And if we go and look into our log file destination, we will also now see that we have PS and a Google Chrome. So now we have all the logs that we like to look at gathered if we sort on name. Next up is we're going to look at the phases that we are going through. We'll have six phases, pre-installation, installation, Post installation. Here we can see that we have a show installation welcome. When we close Internet Explorer, we allow defer and we have defer time three times. That's what we see when we execute the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. We also have a show installation progress. That's just a progress bar if we are looking at the UI while installing. If we go further down to the post installation, we have a show installation prompt. This is a message and we can customize the text. This is just to tell the end user that installation is complete. If we go further down, we have a pre-installation. Here we also have show installation welcome to force down Internet Explorer. We have on installation and then we have post installation. So six phases in total. So when I do my installation of a package, could I just use the pre-installation face? Yes, sure you could. But let me show you one thing. We go to a log file, we open it with a notepad. It's not quite suited for looking into log files, but uh, it's doable. We have initialization, and then we have the pre-installation, and then we have the post-installation. So this gives you a idea of why we have these installation phases. 
because it's really easy for you to go into the face and see where to debug and where it ended wrong. I strongly suggest that you get a copy of CM Trace. You can get that from a client running Config Manager. Until recently, you could download it from the internet. It's not possible anymore. Uh, it's been revoked. So you need to get hold of your CM Trace copy from a client. Well, let's see here what we have in the log file. It's started, and then we have a lot of variables, and we can actually use these variables inside our script. So let's say that we wanted some kind of intelligence where we needed to taste for the culture and, and do stuff based on if it's a, a Danish or English machine. You could actually use this in a if sentence and do stuff. And if we go into our pre-installation, now you see all that is happening. Um, a dialogue is created, etc. And um, we have this post installation where we display the, the custom prompt. And uh, now let's get rid of, of all that. As I don't have Chrome on this device, I will just show you how to shut down, for example, Microsoft Edge. And to find out what we need to close, we can in the Sys internal suite get a tool called Process Explorer. It's a more advanced task manager. So in here, we will start the edge. And then we will look at the process here. We could use this um, tool and it will show us directly to the process msedge.exe. That's what we want to close. And you can see it's uh, defined by iExplorer and not iExplorer.exe. So I'm going to do the same. .exe is um, translated by the tool itself. As this is a silent package and I want MSH to be closed without asking the user, I would actually like to make this a silent solution. So how can I do that? Well, right now I don't get any help by the tool. So let's see how we can do that. Go into the app deploy toolkits and let's edit the app deploy toolkit main in the same eyes here. And let's just run that. Now we will get all the main script functions so we will be helped along the way. Let's click OK. This is because, yeah, we didn't run ICE as a admin. No issues there. Now let's type here. And as you can see, we are presented with the switches of this function. I'll put silent on it. Let's go to the post installation phase and I don't want to see this screen anymore. Important is to see that we have a ending uh, function here. So we need to put that somewhere else and we will put it down here. In our pre uninstallation, I don't want to force anything down. So let's just uncomment that and um, we are ready. So we have Edge, and now we want to deploy our application to see that it should close Edge and install our application. And as you could see, our application was closed and the progress bar did show, and we have no finalized screen. So actually, all in all, this was a huge success. Let's go into the Chrome package and uh, let's open it with the CM trace. Now if we scroll down and we go into the pre-installation, now we see that the following processes are running MSH and force close applications Microsoft Edge without prompting the user. 
Thank you very much for looking at chapter two of the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, like, subscribe, and uh, make sure you don't miss the next.